Sometimes we face, we forget where we are coming from in an attempt to go to where we are going. But when it comes to the journey of life, there is a place to constantly remember where God brought you from. It's amazing how the testimony of victory that we experienced yesterday as a way of reinforcing faith in our heart when we face current enemies. Say to your neighbor, fight the good fight of faith. You wonder why God will say it's a good fight? Because you are destined to win. Don't deny that the fear is around. Don't deny it. Recognize the fear and call it by its name. You fear of barrenness. You fear of financial poverty. You fear of untimely. Call the fear by its name. Don't deny the fear. And when you call it by its name, then you call on God for his help. Bible with me to Deuteronomy chapter 20 from the NLT version. Deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to verse 4 we will read Deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to verse 4. The NLT version, yeah. So let's read together from verse 1 to verse 4. Go on. When you go out to fight your enemies, uh -huh, and you face horses and chariots and an army greater than your own, do not be afraid. The Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt is with you. Uh -huh. When you prepare for battle, the priest must come forward to speak to the troops. He will, not, he will say to them, listen to me. All you men of Israel, do not be afraid as you go out to fight your enemies today. Do not lose heart or panic or tremble before them. Why? For the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies and he will give you the victory. Someone say he will give you the victory. One more time. We need to know that fear is one of the most destructive forces on the face of the earth. And uh, especially when we look at what has transpired in the recent years and what is still going on all over the world today. Sometimes I even get fed up of listening to some news because it's all full of bad news all across the world. And uh, as the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ drawing near, your only hope 
is our faith in God. The only hope is faith in Christ. The spirit of fear is Satan's most, destruct, most destructive weapon against God's children. It's one of his weapons he used to create mayhem and havoc. No wonder Prophet Isaiah predicted that in the last days, multitude will be living in the pit and in the sphere of fear. Uh, on your own time, you could take note of the scripture. That's Isaiah 24, 17 to 18, but we'll not read that. So there was a prophecy which Isaiah was prophesying that in the later days, multitudes will be living in the pit and in the sneer of fear. But this is the good news, that God's will for you and I is to be victorious over fear. Say to your neighbor, God's will for you is to be victorious over fear. Now touch yourself and say, God's will for me is to be victorious over over fear. I'm victorious. I will be over fear in the name of Jesus. When I was paying a close attention to that verse, um, verse 1 of that scripture, in that uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1, look at it again. It says, uh, when you go out to fight your enemies and you face horses and chariots, and an army greater than your own, do not be afraid when you go out. So I said, the question is not if, but when. The question is not if you go out, it's when. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I, as long as we breathe in and out, from time to time, we do go out, and we will still go out to fight enemies. We will face horses and chariots and an army greater than us in the physical. But God said, do not be afraid. So it's not if, it's when. For some in this season, you are not out fighting no enemy. You are not facing no horses. And some are. But the good news is that no matter when or how you go out and you face the enemies and the horses greater than you, we can reassure ourselves in his promise that says, do not be afraid. Do not worry. Because you will see that the number one principle that governs warfare is what we just see in that verse 1. To go out is, is not enough, but to go out and not being afraid. I mean, when, even when you look at this last one year, um, one of the things, one of the um, things put in place to more like to cope these uh, spread of this pandemic is keep everybody at home, which makes sense to, to avoid the spread of the virus. But the question is this, even after the pandemic is over, many who have been used to staying home will still find it difficult to go out. Because there is a mindset that there is an enemy out there. So Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, in 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were called and I have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Say to your neighbor, fight the good fight of faith. You wonder why God will say it's a good fight? Because you are destined to win. Go ahead and clap your hand. Say it's a good fight because I'm destined to win. When you see two boxers go into the ring and one came out and said, man, it was a good fight. You better know he won. The one that is beating never said it's a good fight. But God says, fight the good fight of what? Of faith. It's a good fight of faith. So when we go out to fight the enemy, it's a faith battle. Say with me, it's a faith battle. And that's the battle we are constantly facing. 
It's not just about the fear. It's a faith battle we are constantly facing. Bishop, how long will this fight last? As long as you breathe in and out. As long as you and I, we are alive, we are out to fight this faith battle. What's the simple definition of fear? Let me give you this simple definition of fear. Fear is an uneasy feeling. A feeling of dread. A feeling of an alarm warning. Feeling threatened by someone or something. In this case with Adam. He was afraid of the one that needed not to be afraid of based on dread. Because when you understand fear, there is a good fear and there's a bad fear. The bad fear has its root in satanic invasion on people's lives. But there's a good fear which the Bible talks about which is the fear of the Lord. And that fear of the Lord is not born out of dread. It's born out of reference. Say reference for God. One more time. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, it says, uh, Proverbs 1 7, in the NLT version of Proverbs 1 7, read on everybody. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. And the NKG version, that we all know, says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And don't forget, wisdom is an embodiment of Jehovah God himself. Wisdom is the embodiment of Jesus. So when men despise God, they despise to fear him, to reference him. Guess what? They will have to dread the enemy. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I believe that for you and I, we are coming into that place that we will rise above every fear in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go back to that Deuteronomy chapter 20 again and see what, what God was saying to his people. Deuteronomy chapter 20. From verse 1, the NLT. When you go out to fight your enemies and you face horses and chariots and an army greater than your own, say everybody, do not be afraid. It's not a question of if, it's when. The Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt is with you. So the reason why they will not need to be afraid is if you can just cast your mind back to the testimony of how the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt. It's amazing how the testimony of victory that we experienced yesterday as a way of reinforcing faith in our heart when we face current enemies. When you face them, bring to mind how the Lord your God delivered you from Egypt. Sometimes we face, we forget where we are coming from. In an attempt to go to where we are going. But when it comes to the journey of life, there is a place to constantly remember where God brought you from. That's why you hear me say from time to time, the grace of God brought me this far. His grace will carry me through. Say to yourself, the grace of God brought me this far. And his grace will carry me through. And if there's a time we need to let that be so reinforced in our heart, it's now. Then in our what when, when to say, he says in verse 2, when you prepare for battle, the priest must come forward to speak to the troops. He will say to them, Listen to me. Just imagine the priest speaking to the troop at uh, the chaplain. I'm, that's why even in our military setup today, do you know they still have chaplain? They still, you know, they still have religious clergymen that also, I mean, look at wisdom. Somebody will now say, we don't need God. Even our, our armies need God. 
It says the priest will speak to them. The people going to face this enemy will speak to them. I hope and I pray that our armies of this current world will hear the word of faith from men of God. When you prepare for battle, the priest must come forward to speak to the troops. Is that in your Bible? He said what? The priest must what? To what? To speak to the troops. It's not enough to go to the battle with your armory. The priest must come forward to speak. In our world today, where are the priests? And not just for armies. In our families, where are the priests? May the fathers rise up to be godly priests in our house. In our churches today, where are the priests that will speak the word of faith in the face of battles? And what will the priest say? He say he will say to them, go on, listen to me, all you men of Israel. Go on. Do not be afraid as you go out to fight our enemies today. Who is speaking? The priest. The priest. Where, where, where are they about to go? They are about to go and face the enemies. And what will he say to them? Do not be afraid as you go out to fight your enemies today. Do not lose heart. Someone say, do not lose heart. Go on. Two, do not panic. Three, not tremble before them. Say to your neighbor, do not lose heart. Do not panic or tremble before them. For the Lord your God is going with you. And, and what will he do? He will fight for you against your enemies and he will give you the victory. If you want to shout, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. For the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight. So which means even in the fight of life, he does the fight. You remember in the book of Exodus, he says you will not need to fight in this battle. I will fight for you. You will hold your peace. That's why I say the fight is the fight of faith. Fight of faith. I say fight of faith. Fear has a tendency, if we don't know how to put it where it belongs, it has a tendency to even affect our health. And these are the time we need to reinforce, to let faith be reinforced in our heart. Because fear has a tendency to affect our human health. This is, there's no question about that because our emotional being affects our entire body. And that's the reason why one of the things you must guard against is what goes through the gates of your ears and what goes through the gate of your eyes. It's not everything that goes through the gates of your ears that you allow to stay in your heart. It has to come through one ear and go throughout the to second ear. The only thing that must stay is the word of faith. Yeah. So you think the word of faith. So Bishop, how can I combat my fear? How can I raise a standard against fear when it shows up? In Isaiah 41 verse 10, the scripture make is very clear. In Isaiah 41 verse 10. Go on everybody. Fear not. For I am with you. Uh huh. Be not be dismayed. For I am your God. Uh huh. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I want you all to read that verse and read it very loud. One, two, three, go. Uh -huh. Now, who is speaking here? God. How long ago was this spoken word?
penned on the pages of our Bible. 10 years, 100 years, thousands of years. Now the one who penned this word through his prophet, is he dead or is he still alive? The one who penned this word through the mouthpiece of his prophet, was he, is he aware of the 21st century we are living in? Yes. Is he aware that we will be in a world that will be so much filled with fear more than ever before? Yes. But what is he saying? Don't, don't forget, he said the priest will speak to them when they are going to face the battle. Now, the, the, the priest of all priests spoke through the priest. Fear not, for I am. Don't just see I am with you, no. For I am. Don't forget, Moses said, what will I, who will I say, send me, tell him, I am. Don't just read that verse and think, for I am with you, no. For I am with you. Who is with you? I am with me. I am is with me. Not I was. That's why the Bible said God is our refuge. God is our strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Hear me. When fear shows up, it's trouble. But I am with me. I say I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am. Is your God. And then what will he do? I will strengthen you. Why strengthen? Because fear weakens. Fear weakens. And how does fear weakens? Through words. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a lover of box, boxing. I always like it before the boxing contest when the two opponents have to face each other. Just you. After they've taken their weight. And then they say, look right into the face of your guy. And why one is looking? You can look into his ears and release fear into the heart of, into the eyes of the opponent. So before I even show up in the ring, he has released fear ahead. And that's many, many times it is what goes ahead before the battle that makes the difference. That's why you understand what Goliath was doing when he was releasing those words to weaken David. And David also released the word before he released the stone. He said, today I'm going to cut off your head. <laughs> and I'm going to give your carcass to the birth to feed on you. The guy has not even thrown a stone yet. I pray today may you release words. It's not... The question is not if, it's when. And for some of us, in this current climate, we got to rise up with the word of faith in the face of fear. It shall be well with you. I say it shall be well with you. So what do you do? When you face fear, ask for God's help and receive it by faith when you are fearful. Say with me, I must ask for God's help and receive it by faith, when I am fearful. That's what you do. Don't deny that the fear is around. Don't deny it. Recognize the fear and call it by its name. You fear of barrenness. You fear of financial poverty. You fear of untimely. Call the fear by its name. Let me hear you say that. You got to. Don't deny the fear. But call it by its name. And when you call it by its name, then you call on God for his help. You call on God for what? His help. Lord, I'm facing this fear. But I call on you for help because you promised to help me. You got to. You got to know that. And then tap into the power of God's word. You begin to tap into the power of God's word. So the areas you are facing fear, get the scriptures that relates to your fear. You look for the scriptures that relates to your fear. You get the scriptures and begin to chant it and release it. Dear friend, 
I'd like to invite you to start a new relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today if you have never done so. By A, acknowledge that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sin. And C, confess him with your mouth as your personal Lord and Savior. So say this after me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am. A sinner in need of a Savior. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that he died for my sin. And on the third day, God raised him up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as this prayer may sound, if you pray it from your heart, God heard you. And guess what? You are saved. You are now a child of God. So I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church wherein you can grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if there's any way I could be of help to you, please contact the number on the screen. I'll be more than happy to support you and to help you. Until next time when I come into your house, you keep on winning because God is on your side and you are destined to win. God bless you.